All right, welcome back to our CryEngine tutorial video set. In this video, I'm going to give an example of how I would use the flow graph. I'm going to use the flow graph to make an AI character follow a path. So the first thing I'm going to need is an AI character. So a good way to find these AI characters is using the database viewer. I'm going to go ahead and open my database view. And normally I would have to go to this folder and load the library. And under here, you can see I have this library, CryNet Ops. This one right here has a lot of good AI characters into it. But I've already loaded this library, so I'll find it in this drop down list. In CryNet Ops, I have a few different folder options, but I'm just going to choose one of the first ones I can find. So I'll choose this first one here. And I'll go ahead and drag it out and place it on the ground. All right, so now I have this AI character. The next thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need a path for the AI character to follow. So to set up a manual path, over on my roll-up bar, under my brush tab, or, or under, over on my roll-up bar, under my objects tab, I'm going to go to AI. And one of the options I have is AI path, simple enough. So I'll select this AI path. And up here, I wanna make sure that I have follow terrain selected, otherwise it's going to be very difficult to place this path. So what I'm gonna do is I'll click once in front of the AI, and you can see it starts me on this path editor. So I'll go ahead and click in the next place I want him, and then the next place, and the next place, and the next place, and when I'm finished, I will just double click and it will finish. It took me forever to figure out that double clicking ended the path placement. I was trying all sorts of things. All right, so now we have our two main components. We have our AI and we have our path that we want him to follow. So now it's time to open up the flow graph. So I'll go up to view and open view pane and my flow graph. And in this flow graph, I'm going to go ahead and I'll create a new flow graph. All right, so we're just blank right now. So I want him to start following the path at the start of the game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a node and it is going to be the game start node. All right, the next one I'm going to need is the AI follow path node. We'll choose AI and I'll select follow path. All right, so now I have the two nodes I need. So upon the game starting, I want the AI to begin following the path. So I'll drag a little arrow from my output of game start to sync up with follow path. You'll notice that the AI follow path node wants me to select, wants me to choose an entity. So one way to do that is to enter the ID of the entity, but an easier way to do that, a much easier way, is to select the character that I want to be associated with that node in my viewport. So I have him selected. Then under choose entity, if I right click there, I can press assign selected entity. So whatever entity I had selected in my viewport is now assigned to that node. So that was a lot easier. I'm also going to have to plug in my path into this node. So over here on the right hand side, you can see that I have my options over here and one of them is path name. So if you didn't notice when I placed that AI path, it just got defaulted to the name AI path one. So I'm gonna go ahead and type that exact name into here and yes, it is case sensitive and it does have to be exact. So if you want to be a little more mistake proof, you can name your paths easy things to remember so they're easier to plug into here. All right, so those are the two things I need. Another thing that I'm going to do to make this a little bit more interesting is under this option, run, instead of walking, I'm going to tell him to run. That should be a little more fun. All right, I believe our AI path is all set up. So I'm gonna drag our flow graph to the side. And down here on the bottom, I'm going to select AI and physics, and this should trigger the AI to start running. 
let's see what happens. You can see he starts and he follows the general path there. And when I want him to stop running, I'll just select that AI button again. So it looks like our flow graph node worked. So there's a good example of how the flow graph can be used to make events happen. I think that's about all I wanted to cover with this example. So with that, I'll close.